Follow me as we go to the book of Psalm chapter 8. The book of Psalm chapter 8. Psalm chapter 8. I will start from verse 1 to 4. Book of Psalm chapter 8 from verse 1 to 4. Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. He, you who set your glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and infants, you have ordained strength because of your enemies, that you may silence the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your hands, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have ordained, verse 4, what is man that you are mindful of him? What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him? This is the question that the Bible asks us. The Bible began to tell us about what man is. Maybe he asked God a question, what is man that you are mindful of that man? This is a question that man had no answer. Only God can give the answer of this question. The Bible says, what is man that you are mindful of him? We may not be able to understand it. But when we go to the book of Genesis, chapter 3, verse 19. Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. God answered that question. Genesis 3, 19. The Bible said, look at what the Bible said. Genesis 3, 19. In the sweat of your face, in the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread till you return to the ground. For out of it we are taken. For thus you are, and to thus you shall return. The Lord decided to ask the answer that question, that man is ordinary dust. The Bible asks us what is man that you are mindful of him. God decided to answer that question, man is ordinary dust. And the Lord said to Adam and Eve, you are dust, and the unto dust you shall return. When I look at life, I discover that the greatest problem men have is that they don't understand life. They don't understand the world. The greatest problem every individual I find in the face of earth have is because that man don't know what life is all about. I discover that the man will begin to experience peace and joy. Immediately he understand what God said life is all about. Our peace and our joy and our blessing lies when we understand who we are. Look at what God said. The Bible said that man is ordinary dust. And the unto dust, that man shall return. I want to talk to you, child of God. Do you know who God says you are? Man is ordinary dust. I discover that those things can stay. Sometimes when I go evangelism, I see a lot of dustbin on the ground. I see a lot of dustbin where they hit dustbin. And you see many people, they are still selling. People are walking freely there. People can still stay beside that dustbin and still display their goods. And the people will still buy. But sometimes I understand if a human being lies dead, nobody can stay there, sir. I discover that dustbin. Somehow, the human being is, can be able to experience the care more than those being. And sometimes we did not understand what life is all about. And that is why people are living their life in sorrow. Do you know you are a dust? And up to dust you shall return. Sometimes I look at myself every day. As I woke up this morning, I am looking at myself now. I discover that one day I will become a history. Every man under the earth, under the face of this earth, shall be a history one day. Every one of us will be a history one day. We will be a forgotten thing. Nobody will remember us anymore. When people want to talk about you, they say, you don't know that woman. You don't know that woman. You don't remember that sister when he, she was alive. You don't remember that brother. That brother that time. You don't remember the brother. But everybody begins to say, oh, which brother? Uh, what is who is that brother? Um, we don't know that tall brother, that slain brother, that yellow brother, that black brother, that time. And they will say, okay, 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 I can remember. 
now brother had come to the history that listener do you know you will be a history one day you will be a history you will be a history all these things we are seeing there is nothing I discovered that human being is like ordinary things being. Immediately, the man dies. Everything about that man ends. You will be a history. All these are our children. My children, my children, is because you are alive. The Bible makes us to understand that when man dies, he don't know the situation of his children. Whether his children are in safety or they are in trouble. The Bible says that that man don't know the situation of his children anymore. And the word of God makes us to understand in the book of Job, chapter 14. The Bible said there is a hole for a man. There is a hole for a tree. Even when the tree is cut down, the Bible said there is a hole for a tree. When the tree cut down, any time red come upon that tree, the Bible said that the tree will come back to life. But look at what Bible said. But to a dead man, there is no hope for him. Immediately he dies, he dies forever. And nobody remember him. He will no longer come out in the world. He don't know the situation of his children anymore. He don't know anything that is happening anymore. I look at life. I begin to ask questions. What do man need upon the earth? Our days on earth is reading. Immediately we are born into the world. Our time begins to read. Man is like ordinary clock. Man is like a wristwatch or a war clock that will stop working one day. Man is like a war clock. You discover sometimes you come to your house, you shake your war clock. Your war clock is no longer working because you don't know the time the batteries die. Battery dies and the war clock stop working. And the man who understands that he is like a war clock, one day he will no longer work. And we understand that we all shall expire one day. Man have expiring days. Everyone under the sound of my voice, anything that has production date has expiring date. And I want to tell everyone here, hearing the word of God, that man is produced by God. Man is a product that God made. And the man will expire one day. Every one of you right now, there is that expiring date God will put in you. God will put that expiring date inside you. Even when you travel to London, you will expire when that day comes. Even though you travel to US, you will expire when that day comes. Even though you are rich, in that day you don't know whether you are rich or poor. You will expire. Even though you have many children, you will expire. Even though you don't have, you will expire. No matter anywhere you are, you will expire. Sometimes when we want to buy products, we shake it. What is the expiring date of this product I want to buy? What is the expiring date? And every one of us shake expiring date. We say, oh, this goods will expire. Oh, it just remain three months. It will expire. Sometimes you say, oh, madam, this one has expired now. Oh, okay, this one don't expire. Give me another one. And we don't understand. Even we that are looking for goods that had not expired. We did not understand that our own life will we expire. We carry expiring dates. We carry expiring dates. Life, what life requires is very small. Very little. Very little. When you see a man that build house, like all these houses we are seeing here, you can see how mighty all these houses are. See glorious houses everywhere. Do you remember? The owner of this house can not, in fact, in a night, he can spend a night in one room. He said one room, that one room is too big for him. One room is too big because he, he cannot contain the whole one room. You see one side, the man will go and lie down. Man did not understand life. Man did not understand life. I have made up my mind that nothing can make me to worry. Nothing. Nothing is qualified to cause worry in my life. Nothing. Nothing. I have said that this life don't warrant me to worry. This life is not permitted to bring sorrow to me. This life is not permitted to cause me to think and to spend sleepless nights. Because the world is nothing. David asked God, in the book of Psalm 39 verse 4, David said, Lord, let me to know the number of my days upon the earth so that I will know I am a passing child. So that I will know that one day I will pass away. In the book of Psalm chapter 90, 
verse 12. Psalm chapter 90, verse 12. The baby asked God and said, Lord, let me to know the number of my days so that I will know I am a passing shadow. This man began to understand that he will pass away. He will just become a history. He will become history one day. You and I will end up as a history one day. We are busy celebrating the day. We are busy celebrating the day, calling everybody on food, calling all our way which are on food to come and celebrate with us. Sometimes I see many people, they say, oh, today is my birthday, and in that day, you will call DJ, you will do cake, you will say, do everything, and we will come together, and we sing, happy birthday to you, and he is very happy. But I understand the meaning of birthday. That birthday means that the Lord has removed 360 five days out of the number of your years on earth. That is the meaning of Bede. Bede means that the Lord has removed 365 days out of the number of your days upon the earth. Because the Bible said that the Lord has given every man the number of days that individual will live upon the earth. And the word of God said that that man cannot exceed that day. Nobody can see the day God has mapped for him to live. So when we understand that God has given us the number of days we will spend on the earth in this world and nobody can see that day. What does he mean now? What does he mean when we are celebrating that day? day? What does he mean when we are celebrating 40th birthday, 60th birthday? It means that the Lord has removed 40 years from the number of our years upon the earth. That is better. And each and every one of us that is still breathing in and breathing out, you have opportunity now to use the little days and little years that remain for you and I to plan for eternity. Everybody needs these little days to plan for eternity. You need to prepare your life. Use these little days these little years you have, these little years you have to put this in order. Maybe you are living a sinful life. Maybe you are a sinner. Maybe you are doing a lot of things because you did not understand that man is ordinary thing. Man, the, the days of a man on earth is vanity. Vanity. See how everybody is struggling. Early in the morning, people are struggling. Some people are running. When you go to Oshodi, by 4 30 in the morning, you will see people rushing for rushing. They are rushing. I don't know what they are rushing for. They are rushing to enter bus. They are running Hector Skater by 4 30. In fact, by 4 30, you will see where you buy hot rice that time. Hot rice that time. And if somebody that is struggling like that, you will still return home in the night. 4 30 in the morning, somebody is out of his bed. And they return him back 11 p.m. in the night. All this our struggle. Where will it end? One day, they will just package that man like a sardine inside coffee and they bury him. They throw him away. I call burial, burial of a thing, throwing away. Burial is throwing away. It's like when they are giving burial for you, they are throwing you away. They, they, they say you are, you are now, you are now a, a, a speech. Let us throw him away. They will throw you away. Each and every one of us under the sound of my voice now, you still have opportunity to, uh, to, to, to accept Jesus and to put your life in order before your years expire. You will expire one day. You will expire. Don't be deceived. No matter who you are, don't be deceived. No matter what you have, don't be deceived. Whether you are poor, don't let your poverty to deceive you. Because poverty can deceive a man. Wealth can also deceive a man. What poverty can do in the life of a man, wealth can also do it. And what wealth can do in the life of a man, poverty can also do it. You have a child of God. Don't be deceived. Poverty can make a man to be deceived. Don't be deceived. Some people say, oh, I have money. I don't need Jesus. I don't need repentance. I have money. 
Who told you that salvation is all about making money? Who told you? Sometimes they say, oh, some people when they have money, they will no longer remember about eternity. They are no longer remembering eternity. They are after business. They are after what they are doing. They are after business. They are after how to make more money. They are after how to grow their business. How to expand their, 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 their space of influence. How to exp uh, expand everything they have. They will continue talking about money. Money, money, money. Until they die. Until the number of their days on earth expire. They die. The same thing happens to poor people. Sometimes somebody say, Oh, I am poor. Let me become rich first. Let me try to make money. I must get money by fire by force. If I get money now, I will be okay. Let me get money now. I will repent after making money. And some people that say this, they never make money. They never touch money. They die. Because our number of days on earth don't know whether we have money or we don't have. The number of our years on earth as long as God give us that life, that day, do you know that you have longer life yesterday than today? Do you know that? Do you know that you have longer life yesterday than today? Do you know that for you to see today, one day have been removed out of the number of your days on earth? You don't know that. For you to see today, God has removed one day out of the number of your years on earth. Yesterday you have one day plus. Today God has done minus. Minus one day today. When you see tomorrow, it will be minus another one day. That is how our days will begin to count. Until the day it will finish. And we will return back. Look at your life very well. If the Lord called you home now, knowing fully where you will leave your house and go. Knowing fully where you will leave your children and go. Knowing fully where you will leave all your investment and go. If the Lord call you home now, look at all these shops by my side now. Wonderful shops. Your neighbor will come and rent it. Look at all these shops here. If the Lord call you home now, where will you spend your eternity? Knowing fully where you will abandon your shop and go. I remember one man that died, even in this later stage. The man was very rich. The man was extremely rich in this legal state. Immediately the man died, his, his family member made inquiry. Are you sure the man is dead? True, true. Are you sure he don't die? Well, well. And they discover that the man is dead. They say, okay, this man has died. What do his family member do? All of them rush to this man's house. They began to look for car keys. They began to look for car keys. Some people stand key. They carry car that worth eight million. The smallest car, like the smallest car the man was driving when he was alive, was eight million. They took it. Some people carry ten million naira car. Some people carry twenty million naira old. People began to carry car. They, their brother died. They are no longer crying for their brother. They are now dragging for the cars of their brother. Because when the man was alive, it's like the man was not doing them well. The man did not treat them well. So they continue waiting for the man to die. They come and share his property for him. Without minding whether he has children or not. All the things we are laboring to get, man is trying to achieve everything. But man will forget the major thing. Man will forget the major thing which is the salvation of his soul. Salvation of your soul is more. Man who try to make money. Man who try to build house. Man who try to drive different cars. Man who try to live in duplex. Man who try to live in comfortable place. Man who try to build mansion. But man who forget the most important thing. Man who forget the most important thing, which is the salvation of his soul. And the Bible said, what shall he profit a man if he may gain the whole world? If a man will end up becoming the owner of the whole banks. If a man will end up becoming the owner of all the banks in the world. If a man will end up becoming the owner of all the houses and shops in the world. If a man will end up becoming all the owner, the owner of every car, all the cars and industries in the world. Jesus asked person, what shall he profit that man that he ate the whole thing? 
and when he died, he lose his soul. And Jesus said, what shall a man give in exchange of his soul? It means that our soul is more important and more precious than what we are looking for. Sometimes we say we don't want to be old. Many of us, we can raise that prayer point in the church. Because sometimes when I hear the kind of prayers people are raising on the altar today, I am afraid somehow. Because you begin to hear some prayer points. Sometimes you can raise a prayer point. Oh Lord, I just say my father, my father. You will hear congregation. My father, my father. I will never be old. Somebody says I will never grow old. I will remain young. In the name of Jesus. I pray that prayer. Some people are praying. Hey, my father, my father. In the name of Jesus. I refuse to be old. I will never be old. I will always be young. That prayer, God is not answering it. After praying that prayer, before you know what is happening, you will see gray hair on your head. That is to tell you, you are getting older, you are getting old. Some sisters, they say they don't want to be old. They want to be every year young. Some ladies, and they keep on making up before they know what is happening. They, before they know what is happening, gray hair will come out by force. Their face begin to change. Their face begin to change. The more they are putting pancake, the more their face is changing. The more they are putting pancake, the more their face is changing. And it will come to a stage that if that sister make up, she will be more ugly than when she did not make up. When her face reaches to that stage, she will stop making up. She will come to discover and to believe that she is getting old. We are growing old every day. And as we are growing old every day, we are approaching our grave. We are approaching our grave. Everybody under the sound of my voice, we are approaching our grave. And you have to accept Jesus. Wherever you are, you have to accept Jesus. I don't care to know what you have. I don't care to know what you acquire. I don't care to know the problem that is facing you now. I am not coming here. I am not here to know what is facing you. I am not here to tell you about your problem. I am not here to tell you about money. I am not here to tell you about cars. I am not here to tell you about house. I am not here to tell you about material things. I am here to tell you about salvation, about eternity, about Jesus, about the salvation of your soul, the end of every man, about the salvation of your soul. That is what I am here to tell you some people may say oh my problem is too much god will help you but remember many many people died in the midst of trouble they still die many people died in the midst of wealth they still die so when you want to tell god oh my problem is too much many people have problems they still die Salvation is what every man, whether you are poor, whether you are rich, salvation is what you need. And the Lord shall supply all your needs in Jesus' name. Every other material needs, every other financial need, every other spiritual need, every other social need, all the other needs in life, the Lord shall supply all your needs in Jesus' name. But remember that whether you are poor or whether you are rich, the number of your years on earth will not cross. You will not cross it. Death will not come and kill you because you are poor. No. Death will not come and kill you because you are rich. No. And death will not say, oh, hey, because you have money, let me leave you. No. Death will not say, ah, because you are poor, let me leave you to enjoy. No. Death kills wealthy people. Death kills poor people. Death kills landlords. Death kills landladies. The only thing that went for a man under the sound of my voice is salvation. And that is Jesus. The Lord is calling everyone under the sound of my voice. That is the reason why God sent me here. I am not come here to be built to pay for your business. Though I will do that, but that is not the major reason of my coming. That is not the major reason of my coming. That is why sometimes when I look at all these so-called ministries, all these so-called churches, all these so-called ministries and churches, pastors and prophets, when I look at them sometimes I begin to cry for the people that are going there. I begin to cry for people that they have as their member. Because the people they have as their member, they never understand they will die one day. We are specializing, God will give you sheep. 
we say amen. God will give you Hobo, Raka, we say amen. God will give you Land Cruiser, we say amen. God will give you Mansion, we say amen. God is taking you to London, we say amen. God is taking you to US, we say amen. What about debt? What about debt? What about debt? Even we, even many people that go to different churches and ministries, different people that go to men of God and preachers of gospel, what is the reason of them going there? Oh, my business. Oh, my visa. Oh, I am looking for husband. Uh, I, I am looking for wife. I, I, I am looking for children. I, I, I want God to increase me. I want God to increase my business. And the man is a millionaire already. Millionaire, dangerous, dangerous wealthy person. In fact, dangerously rich. The man is already dangerously rich. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I pray for him. God will take you there. <laughs> but I don't remember. Millionaire will not remember forever. It won't. It won't. It won't. I have looked at this slide. I understand what Bible said. This world is not my home. You know that song? I remember that song. This world is not my home. I am just a passing through. You remember that song? This world is not my home. I am just passing through. My treasure is in heaven. In heaven beyond the blue. And just a back on me from heaven you open door. And I can feel at home in this world anymore. Anywhere you are under the sound of my voice, so want to give your life to Jesus. One day is coming, your wife will come to your graveyard. Your wife will come to your grave and say, Honey, now you say rest in peace. She will just carry sand and drop it for you there. Maybe your enemy will continue sleeping with your wife after your death. <laughs> A day is coming when your husband will come to your grave. And say, honey, I love you, but not now. Bye bye. Your husband will carry sand, the drop for you there. Daddy, to say anything that concern me and you is over. And that day, maybe your, your neighbor or your girlfriend, your husband will continue sleeping without your girlfriend. Your husband has forgotten you. In fact, in a night before your burial, a night before your burial, your girlfriend will pay your husband visit. And we tell him, I just come to console you. I just come to console you. So your girlfriend may pass night with your husband a night before your burial. On the day of your burial, you will never see one tear from your husband's eye. Because anything you are doing for him, your girlfriend has started doing it for him. So he, he is not feeling you anymore. What shall be your condition on that day? Everyone under the sound of my voice. What will be your condition on that day? The day they will look for you, you will be no more. The day they will look for you, they say, this brother, this sister is no more. Forget about all these things that are deceiving us. Wealth is deceiving us. Money is deceiving us. Prosperity is deceiving us. Those things are nonsense. Even Satan know that those things are nonsense to compare to eternity. Why Satan keep on using these things, those things? Why Satan keep on using those things to trap us is because they will know that man did not understand the value of eternity. Man did not understand the meaning of eternal life. So Satan want to use physical things man can see to trap that man down. But today the Lord is talking to you. You can make up your mind to give your life to Jesus. You can come to a stage to say, Lord, I want to serve you. Lord, I want to follow you. Lord, I want to worship you. Lord, I want to be born again. I am not talking about church. Going to church is not born again. I have seen many people are going to church that are committing adultery. A lot of people go to church, they commit fornication. A lot of people go to church, they lie, they keep malice. I am not talking about going to church. I am talking about being born again. Jesus said, you must be born again. Unless a man is born again, he shall not see the kingdom of God. He shall not see. And he went ahead and said, unless a man is born of the spirit and of the water, he, he shall not wise enter into the kingdom of God. So you need to be born again. You need to receive Jesus in your life. That is why I'm here. To tell you to know Jesus. 
wherever you are right now, you want to give your life to Jesus. You want to save your soul. You want God to help you. You want to surrender your life to Jesus before the number of your years on earth expire. You want to give your life to Jesus before the Lord calls you home. You want to give your life to Jesus before Jesus, before the Lord will call you home. Before they will package you like sardine inside coffee. You want to give your life to Jesus before the number of your years on earth expire. Wherever you are, you can share this word with me. Say this prayer with me and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come and be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Cancel my name from the book of death. Write my name into the book of life. Thank you for forgiving me my sins. In Jesus' name.